Hello, good fishing people. Welcome back to Fishing with Seth and Maine Sport Outfitters. We're down here in Rockport Harbor this morning at Rockport Marine Park, starting off our little Rockport Harbor on foot fishing adventure episode. So I'm gonna start in here in the very weed choked high water um, beach area here right by the Harbor Master's Office. This is a spot that's very accessible, obviously, it being public parking right behind where our great camera guy Joel is working right now. And I'm gonna get started with a basic crab pattern that I've devised. The stripers in here kind of focus on crabs. And so anything down there that more or less looks like one of those bugs ought to produce okay. So we're gonna give a try here and then we're gonna visit a few other spots and get a little bit more of an up close look about how we get line off the reel, into the water, make a few casts and fish effectively and confidently, even when there aren't lots of fish and we're not getting reinforcement from seeing lots of other fishermen out there on these kind of sparsely inhabited ledges and beaches. All right, everybody stay tuned for more. All right, folks, so I want to give everybody a close up look at a little bit of the tackle and the setup for a sinking line presentation with a crab like this. It's not necessary that you have a sinking line to fish a crab. I mean, you could do this with a floater, but I just want to show what my best recommendation would be for maximizing your chances at a spot like this. So I've got a full sink fly line, like what I'd use in a lake situation. This one's a heavy one, it's an eight weight, and I'm using a long fly rod this morning. It's a 12 foot five. And it being a switch rod, you add about three regular line weights if you're using a regular line and not a switch line per se. So I've got a nine weight full sink line on this five weight. It just loads it up nicely and makes crab patterns that are lead eyed and that sort of thing really easy to cast especially. So the basic cast and retrieve doesn't really change because I've got a longer rod and a heavier line. I can keep my casting motion much the same. The retrieve is just a really slow hand twist and occasionally with a pause. So I'm blind casting with a crab, which means I'm really just fishing for the pull and um, trying to set the hook with my line control hand. So when I've made the cast, it's a really low rod position and I'm just doing the figure of eight or the hand twist as the line and the fly are sinking um, fish seed green crabs throughout the water column. They're not just on the bottom, they swim and roll and um, drift up when they collect air bubbles and they grab onto floating rockweed and drop out of them. So they're everywhere. Um, it's a little bit easier when you can see the fish. Of course, my first thing in the morning rule of finding fish makes it hard to see them this early. So we're just kind of chucking and chancing in here and feeling for something, either a rock or a weed. And as soon as I feel a bump, I'm just gonna pull things in and instantly in inspect. And it's almost on every pull. You get a nice long presentation with the hand twist because it's in there for a while, but almost on every pull, I wanna just check and make sure that I'm weed free. So I'm gonna keep trying in a few different spots, but that is the single line crab basics. So one of the great ways to fish is of course just on foot but part of making on foot really work out is driving from spot to spot to see really different locations ge geographically in a short amount of time. So we're driving down through Rockport uh, over C Street past Walker Park which we will uh, touch on later in the episode and we're going to go to the Harkness Preserve which is um, accessible from parking on Spruce Street in Rockport and then a short walk through the woods. Welcome to Harkness Preserve. So I've got about six feet of heavy mono here. As you can tell, it's heavy. It's holding on to the kink that it had off the spool well. Good old nylon will do that until it gets stretched. I'm gonna tie a perfection loop in both ends of this as I'm building a leader for my floating line to fish this particular ledge area. So 
Fishing a ledge like this is really like pocket water fishing in a river. You're basically letting the waves wash up on the ledge. You're putting the fly in there while there is water and then you're letting the fly ride out as the wade recedes off the ledge. Hopefully it's getting kind of tumbled around. And you're using the line a lot like you would in a river. You're making mends to slow the fly's progress down in the wave action, just to let it sit there and more or less suspend in the waves. The stripers will be so close to the rocks that you won't be able to see them on electronics sometimes this time of year as they're just pushed right up into the ledges to find cover and well oxygenated water as bait is coming by. All right, so fishing Harkness Preserve ledges this morning proves to be challenging because there is a mass of floating rockweed, flotsam in general, just kind of everywhere here where um, we've got to be fishing. And since we can't swim out to a ledge or get out on a rocky outcropping that has a clearer look, it's a little bit challenging. This is saltwater fly fishing. It's dynamic and oftentimes you do have to take a little hike into a spot to find out that it's weed choke. Making a few casts is always a good idea just wherever you can get a roll cast in and it is just about fishing short casts. They might roll up on the fly right at your feet, which is often the case. But more than anything in here, we're just gonna be cleaning slop off the fly until the water exchanges and all of this weed get um, flushed out of here by the tide. So we are going to mosey to a new spot to try a new tactic. So we are down on Beauchamp Point Road in Rockport on the northeastern edge of the shore or left as you're looking out of the harbor. And we are going to try these ledges as we are in the shadow and hopefully the weeds aren't as choked in close, but we have a few more ledgy areas that we can get down to. These are a little more gentle sloping ledges and therefore popular picnicking areas and that sort of thing later on in the day. But when you get here early, you get a shot at stripers. We're kind of losing that magic morning hour where we might get a bite from a striper. So I'm going to get to work fishing here in a moment. But I've introduced it in thought and now I just want to show you in person the handy dandy stripping basket. And of course this is a homemade jobby of a shopping basket with the handles cut off. You might uh, recognize the logo or the wording of a popular outfitter here in Rockport, Maine. Um, I made this stripping basket in 1998. It's been a uh, great tool with me saltwater fishing on the west coast of the U.S. and of course all over the striper coast. And I'm going to go to it with a slow sinking fly line and a couple of bucktail streamers. Or actually, Seth's Marabou sand eel is up the leader. That's for a future episode. But we're going to um, arrange our fly line into the basket on every retrieve to keep it out of the barnacles and the rocks at my feet and I'm going to make a go of pulling one of those stripers out from underneath the wash. Mm -hmm. 